God, this is gonna look weird. Having this panel in the way is just ridiculous. All right, so what if I move it from left to right? I absolutely love it. And the temps are? Holy shit. Hello, my tech friends. So I had a thought a while back that I want to test out with you today. You might be seeing people strapping CPU coolers onto GPUs to get better cooling results, but my thought was, what about the other way around? Getting a high-end GPU air cooler and mounting it to a CPU. Is it even possible? Are there any benefits? Will it run cooler or quieter? Hopefully today we can answer the pressing questions that I guess nobody is asking. So from what I've researched, I haven't seen anybody do it this way around, strapping a GPU cooler onto a CPU. So this might be another world first for tech lens, and probably because nobody else is stupid enough to try it, but that's besides the point. We're doing science here. So get subscribed with notifications turned on if you don't want to miss more unique and I guess unuseful content such as this. But otherwise, come along for the ride. So I'm actually filming this one as I go, and I currently have no idea whether this will work or not. But I'm going to run you through the parts of my strategy for mounting the GPU cooler to the CPU, because I already foresee plenty of issues at the moment. Then we're going to attempt to hack, slash, and mount it all together. And if we do manage to successfully get it working, I want to then compare it to a mid-tier CPU cooler option, because why not? So diving into the parts, let's start with the GPU cooler itself. I've gone for the Arctic Accelero Extreme 3 GPU cooler for a couple reasons. Number one is that the cold plate extends down from the heat pipes in the fin stack, so this should give us a bit more flexibility in mounting options. And reason number two is that it has a massive 300 watt max TDP, so it should be really effective if we can get the solution working. To compare against, our mid-tier CPU cooler is the ID Cooling SE234 ARGB, which apparently has a 200 watt max TDP and performed pretty well in my testing. In theory, we should be able to beat this cooler's performance pretty easily, and if we do, we might have to introduce a 240mm AIO to compare against. But our guinea pig processor is a 6-core i5-9600K, which we're going to be running stock to see if this even works, and then maybe we'll revisit overclocking down the line. So first things first, what we should probably do is get our baseline results, and then start figuring out what the issues are when it comes to mounting this GPU cooler onto the CPU. Okay, so the CPU cooler runs our 9600K at 48 degrees at 50% fan speed, 46.4 degrees at 75% fan speed, and then 44.5 degrees at 100% fan speed, which means that these are the numbers to beat. So at the moment, I see that there's three main issues. So the obvious one is that the GPU cooler, the heatsink extends outwards. So we're going to have to avoid the memory, and we're also going to have to avoid the heat sinks for the VRM, or remove them, or sort out a solution for that. Issue number two is that the fan header for this GPU cooler is a GPU fan header. Go figure. Uh, so we need to figure out a way to attach this to a motherboard PWM fan header. And then issue number three, and arguably the biggest one, this is an Intel 11.5X compatible. So we need to figure out a way to make this compatible. So come with me, let's start from the top and we'll figure this out as we go. Okay, so first things first, we need to figure out how we're going to place this GPU cooler on the CPU socket, which orientation we're going to be in. So let's take this CPU cooler off. There we go. And then my theory is we can either go up or down. I kind of like the idea of down because I think down will look cool, but we're interfering with this panel. Uh, even if we go down or we're definitely interfering with this panel if we go up. So we need to remove this panel. So this test bench is the Lee and Lee PC T60. Don't buy this test bench. The only good thing that has going for it is that it's cheap, but the panels here and here, they used to be for a handle that you can carry the test bench. And that's great and all, but the thing is, it just blocks off functionality that you need to get at easily with a test bench, like some of the fan headers down here or RGB headers down there. And having this panel in the way is just ridiculous. So no matter how we do this, we're going to need to remove this panel. You know what, I might as well remove this one too whilst I'm at it. So what we should probably do is get a hacksaw and start cutting. Okay, I think that turned out really quite well. We've got a lot more space to play with and we can figure out the orientation of the GPU cooler, whether we're going to be placing it this way or this way. So let's change up the camera angle and see what we have to work with, whether we need to remove the VRM heat sinks or anything else. Okay, so with the GPU cooler orientating down towards the PCI brackets, See what we have to work with. So we're definitely conflicting with this VRM heatsink, but we are also off center and the memory's in the way. 
So I wonder if we can just remove a couple of the memory modules and that would give us what we need. So we might not be running dual channel, depending on how this goes. So, test number two. That would work. So I am bang on centre there. And I am just about touching the memory modules. So that could work, that is an option. Otherwise, let's try and do it face up. So, ah, immediately we're already hitting the rear IO VRM heat sink up here. So it looks like the only way to do it is facing down. Well, we could take that off. Actually, there's no reason why we can't take that off. But if we take that off, does that mean that we can keep dual channel memory? Yes, that does. We can take that off. Yeah, let's do that. God, this is gonna look weird. So now that we know which way to orientate the GPU cooler, we need to figure out how to power the fans. So I'll tell you what, let's change up camera position and figure that out. So the Arctic Accelero Extreme 3 cooler, the fans on it use a four pin GPU fan header. Although this specific fan header does plug into a GPU, it uses the exact same pin layout as a typical motherboard PWM fan header. So in theory, all that we need to do is grab a PWM fan extension cable, and if we attach this head onto the GPU fans cable, we can connect it to the motherboard, and this should allow the fans to spin. So let's do that. First thing first, I'm going to snip off the head of the GPU fan header. Allow yourself a bit of extra room in case you want to reattach it at a later date. So then it's just a case of being gentle enough to remove the rubber casing from the core and the same for the PWM extension cable. Which does remind me, I do need to buy some cable strippers at some point, but at TechLens not having the proper tools it isn't a good enough reason to not do something stupid. But anyway, now that we have all the wires exposed, we need to attach them in the correct order. So let's grab a soldering iron and solder them together. Just make sure that the connection is strong. So there's a nice and easy way to make sure that you're connecting the right wires together as black will be ground. So start by soldering the two black ones together and everything else should just fall in place as it will be in the same order. And the last thing that we need to do is make sure the exposed wires don't touch each other or something else. So let's just wrap them in some electrical tape. Okay, so testing out the Accelero fans, they're plugged into the motherboard chassis fan header. Do you guys wanna see something weird? There we go. Yep, I just turned on a computer with a mini samurai sword. That's not what I meant. Do you see that? The reason why that's odd is because the other two fans are fine, they work. They, I've plugged them in, I've tested them, they ramp up, they spin down, they work PWM control. And it looks like everything's plugged in in series. So I guess maybe the center fan is just dead. The funny thing is I've had this for like two years now and I've never actually turned on the fans. I've always run the heat sink with separate fans. So maybe it's just always been dead. Hmm. I knew that there'd be some hiccups in this project, but that's annoying. What to do? So I've bought another Accelero 3, and whilst we're waiting for that to arrive, we can press on with the video. There's a few things that we can do in the meantime. I've also bought a couple of headers and cables so that we can make an adapter for the new Accelero. Because to be honest, I don't mind mutilating one Accelero for this video, but two is starting to sound a little bit expensive. So let's press on. I want to talk to you about how we're mounting this and my theory. Okay, let me talk you through how I anticipate that we're going to mount this. So the Arctic Accelero cooler has these countersunk screws here. What I think that we can do is remove the plate and attach some aluminium that will cover these holes here. Then we can mark it out, drill it through and attach it using nuts and bolts. That will then clamp it and apply pressure to the CPU. So that's how I imagine that we're going to do it. So what we can probably do is reuse these countersunk screws if we have metal that's the same width, which we do. Here we have some aluminium, which is exactly the same width as the bracket that's already attached to the Accelero cooler. All that we need to do is measure it and cut it to size. So first things first, what we need to do is remove the VRM heat sinks. So let's do that, let's remove them and see what space we have to work with. Okay, so now that we have the VRM heat sinks removed, we can figure out what's in the way and what we're conflicting with. Because if we make direct contact with the CPU right now, it's looking really promising. So moment of truth, I'm gonna lower it down and it feels good. I'm gonna try and get a better angle, see if you guys can see it. All right, so what if I move it from left to right? Do I feel like I'm hitting anything? Not entirely sure if I can tell. Let me grab something with a straight edge. Yep, this is all that I could find, don't judge me. So these capacitors are definitely sticking up higher than the CPU. But are they conflicting with the mounting mechanism? Which I don't think they are. 
So what I'm going to do is mark out where we need to cut. Cool, so what we're going to do is cut this in half and also across there. And that will give us two individual pieces for our mounting mechanism. And then hopefully that will be the basis of an accelero mounted to a CPU. So let's get to it. Okay, so now that I've cleaned them off with a bit of alcohol, they're not the prettiest, but they should still work. So as we can see, the screws, they sit nice and flush. So it shouldn't interfere with anything on the motherboard. So now it's probably a good time for us to do a test fit to make sure that now I drilled in the correct place. So I did want to leave a little bit of a gap so we shouldn't be butting up against there with nothing left, just so that we have a bit of room to play with. And I think that is bang on perfect. That's not a bad fit. Okay, let's hope the other side is the same. Okay, there's a lot of room left over on the left-hand side on this side. There's a lot of room there but that doesn't really matter too much. That's not bad, that would work. I mean, you could always tidy it up and get the edges straighter, but realistically that doesn't matter to the performance. So, starting to come along, ladies and gentlemen. So this is only part one of the mounting mechanism. We also need to drill holes here so that we can secure it to the socket in the motherboard. But let's measure that and see what that looks like. We want to make sure that the cold plate is touching the CPU and making sure that nothing's in the way. I am resting on the VRMs. Am I even touching? Yeah, we're not touching that. We are not touching the CPU. That is a shame. That means that we're gonna to have to do what I didn't want to do. So you'll see that there's a couple millimeters gap between the processor and the coal plate that we need to try and fix. The only problem is we've got a couple capacitors in the way on the left hand side, which it looks like that we could trim our mounting solution to maneuver around it. However, on the right hand side, we're not only touching the VRM, but underneath there, we also have more capacitors that are in the way and we wouldn't be able to modify our mounting solution without severely cutting into the Accelero 3, which I really wouldn't like to do if I don't have to. So I've ordered something I really didn't want to as it comes with a performance penalty that I really didn't want to introduce but we will get into what that is in a bit but now we need to move on to figuring out the mounting placement for the accelero and drill some holes so that we can mount it to the motherboard so we need to mark these holes these are incorrect don't worry about these let v1 we'll call them so we need to mark these holes so that the cold plate actually sits on the cpu and doesn't go so that the cpu is say like out here because that would not be optimal so the best way that I can see doing this is line everything up the way that it's meant to be. The CPU touching the cold plate, which is there. So now it's drilling time. So we need to drill through these holes and attach a nut to the other side so that we can feed a bolt through. And then that should be our retention mechanism. So let's start drilling. Okay, so slight update to the mounting mechanism. So I drilled out the holes in this and the problem is with aluminium is it's, it's not a very strong metal. And I thought that a small piece would be strong enough for this, but it turns out it's not. If I can do that with my hand, it does take a lot of strength, but that's not going to be good enough for actually mounting this onto the CPU. So what I did is I ended up cutting another two pieces. And I continued on with my work. So I redrilled the countersunk holes, but what I left in was this edge. So this gives it a lot more strength. This is not gonna budge at all because it's having to contort against this angle, which means that it's a lot stronger. So what I've also done is I've widened these holes. So this will give us a lot more flexibility in mounting when we go to mount it. But now all that's left to do is wait for the new Accelero 3 so that we can sort the fans out for the GPU cooler. And we're waiting for one last piece for the mounting solution. And then we get to mount this and test it. I'm actually quite excited. So the new Accelero has arrived. And what's the first thing that we're going to do? We're going to test it. So let's do that. Let's test the fans, make sure that they work, then make an adapter so that we can plug it into a motherboard header. Okay, so our new Accelero 3 is plugged in. We're wired up to DC 12 volt with the adapter that comes with the Accelero. So what we're expecting is that we'll turn this on, all of the fans will ramp up to 100% fan speed. So moment of truth, get the trusty samurai sword. There we go. 
So next up, we need to make an adapter so that we can control the fan speed through the CPU fan header. Okay, so we've got the Arctic fan that we used earlier and a soldering iron, because what we're going to need to do is desolder this. I do actually have more fan extension cables that I could use, but why bother cutting another one when I can just use this one? So what we also need is a GPU fan header female connector. So what we need to do is desolder these and then attach this female head onto this cable so that we can plug the new accelerator into here and then this into our motherboard. Okay, so time to test our adapter. We have it wired into the chassis fan header. Um, the electrical tape inside of that is also liquid electrical tape because the connections are so close together, you, you wanna make sure that they're not gonna bridge. So I'd recommend liquid electrical tape. And now is time to test it, I guess. There we go. Perfect. So we now have it running, PWM controlled, all three fans are working. Let's actually mount this to the CPU. Which brings us on to the thing that I was alluding to earlier, the thing that I didn't want to buy. And that's this. This is 99.9% .9 pure copper and it's a three mil plate of it. Now we have a small gap between the cold plate on the cooler and the IHS of the processor. And the quick and dirty way to fix that problem is by using this. The problem with that is in, when you start adding material between the heat source and the thing that's meant to dissipate the heat, it, the heat transference becomes less optimal the more material that you add in. This is not the best solution, but it is the quick and dirty, easy solution that we're going with now. And the thing is, it's not even completely flat. So. We're gonna start with this. Maybe there'll be an update video of how we can optimize this. Drop a comment below if you can think of a better way that we can do this. But otherwise, we'll start with this. Uh, maybe in a future video, we'll do some lapping. We'll try and reduce the thickness of this, or we'll think of a different mounting solution. But let's get this done. Okay, so this is our chunk of copper. It's cut down to about the same size as the socket. So we've got a bit of room to play with. I wasn't going to lap. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a lot of marks on this. That's not gonna be very good for contact between the IHS and the cold plate. So we are going to lap this. This side's not too bad. So for those of you that don't know, lapping is essentially taking some sandpaper, scratching all of the indents out and buffering it and making the surface as smooth as possible. So what you need is some heavier grit sandpaper, nothing too coarse, medium light, and then some extra fine grit. And then the last thing you want to do is give it a wet sand. And that should basically buff out all the marks. Okay, so the time has finally come. All that we need to do is put the copper spacer onto the IHS, then attach our GPU cooler. And at the back, we've got these little rubber metal washer things. So what that will do is stop the metal from touching the back of our motherboard, scratching it and exposing some of the traces of the PCB because we don't want to short anything. So that should work with that. Then clamp it down with the nuts. So I guess it's starting time. I'm going to use the thermal paste that I used in the previous test to keep everything fair and consistent. All right, so what I'm gonna do is apply a bit of pressure on it just to make sure that we're getting pretty even coverage. So moment of truth. And that clears it very well. So what I'm trying to do is be extremely careful to make sure that there's even mounting pressure on each side. So I'm barely doing these up finger tight. So I'm going to be doing them all up with the same amount of force in a star pattern for even pressure. So that is pretty much on there as best as it can be. And it doesn't actually look all that bad, at least nowhere near as bad as I thought it would. So now's probably a good time for me to tell you guys what I think will happen with our testing, whether it will be our mid-tier CPU cooler. Going into this, I thought, hands down, if we can get it mounted, it will absolutely beat the ID cooling CPU cooler. But that was before we added a big chunk of copper between the GPU cooler and the CPU. So now if I were to speculate how well it's gonna perform, I think it's gonna be worse. I think it will still work, but I don't imagine that it's going to be better than the CPU cooler, just because that has much more direct contact to the CPU. So it has a huge advantage there. But as for the GPU cooler, now it's time to see how well it works. Okay, so I've just turned it on and I fired up hardware info. Isn't that the stupidest thing that you've ever seen? I absolutely love it. Okay, so something quite surprising actually. Um, so for evidence, there's the display port cable. It goes down here up to this monitor and idle temperatures, so they will increase, but 
idle temperatures are looking really good. We're looking at 30s, mid 30s, in a room that's 24.7 degrees at the moment, it's toasty in here. So we need to control the room temperature and then run some benchmarks, I think, because it's looking really good. Okay, so comparing our results to our baseline, the ID Cooling SE234 ARGB, even with a three millimeter copper plate between the CPU and the cooler, we're actually seeing a small decrease in CPU temperatures. This is better than I expected, really, and I know that we can definitely improve on these with a much more direct mounting solution, which we will absolutely be doing a follow-up video on. But one area that I was concerned was with the VRM temperatures, as removing the heat sinks has the potential to overheat them. But as the Accelero fires air directly at the VRM, this doesn't seem to be an issue at all, and the temperatures are well in check. So thanks for coming on this exploratory journey with me, and make sure that you subscribe and notifications turned on so that you don't miss more unique content or part two of this video. Overall, I think it was quite a success, but I think that we could do better. So in part two, we're really going to revise what the mounting solution looks like, and we're going to get direct contact with the CPU, because I think that we could obliterate our baseline results, and I think I have the way. But if you have any mounting suggestions, drop them in the comments below. I'll definitely end up reading them before the follow-up video, so who knows, you might have a better idea than me, and I might end up using it. But otherwise, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.